Hello students, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we'll do the writing section of the April 2021 SAT that was released uh, yesterday. The problem with doing English with the screenshots that was released is that it becomes a little hard to kind of fit everything on the screen. So what I've done here is I've created two copies of the writing section um, and I've shared both of them. And I'll try and look at the questions on the right hand side PDF and the text on the left hand side. So let's begin. The first passage, Olive for All. Computer programs rely on many different pieces of software in order to function properly. Examples of computer programs include games and word processors. And this question is about underlining, uh, about combining the underlying sentence. Option A, in order to function properly, computer programs rely on many different pieces of software. They include games and word processors. Computer programs such as games and word processors rely on many different pieces of software in order to function properly. Option C, computer programs, including games and word processors, function properly and rely on many different pieces of software for that. Option D, for functioning properly, games, word processes, and other computer programs rely on many different pieces of software. So the best answer for this question of combining uh, sentences, one second, mm. where is the, yeah. So the best answer is option B. The main point of the sentence is that computer programs rely on many different pieces of software in order to function properly. And the second sentence gives you examples, right? So you can include those examples in the main sentence by saying such as, right? So when you say computer programs such as games and word processors, you are including the examples there and then you are discussing the main thing. So this sentence is grammatically correct. It is concise and it conveys the information. Now option A, in order to function properly, computer programs rely on many different pieces of software. They include games and word processors. That's just um, not needed. That has more words than are needed when you can say the same thing um, with fewer words, right? So A is not a good answer. Um, option C, uh, is not a good answer because it is also saying function properly and rely on different pieces of software for that. So that also does not convey the correct sense and is using too many words. And option D, um, for functioning properly, you are using the examples and then you are saying other computer programs. So again, you're not giving the subject it's due, which is computer programs. And so D is not a good answer. Okay, let's read further. However, rapid technological advancements render hardware, physical computing devices and operating systems, software needed to run programs out of date, which makes it difficult for individuals to access old computer programs and associated data files. So here you're describing what hardware is. You're saying it's physical computing devices. And then you are defining what operating systems are, software needed to run programs. So you need to start the bracket, which finishes at programs, right? So for option question two, the best answer would be option um, C. Because when you say operating systems, bracket, software needed to run programs, you are defining operating systems in the same way as the sentence has defined hardware. You don't need a comma after systems because you need to define uh, what operating systems are. So just a bracket is needed. Okay. Um, according to Mahadev Satyanarayan of Carnegie Mellon University and Basant Bala of the of the IBM Corporation, data from computer programs remain available only so long as the software applications that process those data formats are also preserved. Now, this says which choice most effectively uses a quotation from a 2011 Library of Congress interview to further explain how idea, the idea presented in the previous sentence. 
So in the previous sentence, we said that uh, when technological advances happen, then uh, hardware and operating systems, they, uh, they become out of date. And so it can be difficult to access old programs and data files, right? So what is a quotation by Mahadev Satyanarayan and Vasant Pala that would support it? Now, option A, data from computer programs remain available only so long as the software applications that process those formats are preserved. This supports what the previous sentence is saying. So I'll keep this for now. This sounds like a good option. Um, option B, um, scholars in variety of scientific fields rely on complex simulation and visualization software. This has no relevance with losing data because of uh, the lack of formatting or the lack of uh, ability to speak to current technology. So B is not, the, not a good answer. Much attention has been paid to the preservation of digital content like text, audio, and video while software applications become obsolete. Um, again, this shifts the focus to digital content. It does not tell me the problem with not being able to preserve software. So C is not a good answer. Digital libraries should include safeguards to make sure people don't publish something they don't have rights to. So this is about copyright and has nothing to do with uh, not being able to access old files. So the best answer is option A. Satyanarayan and Bala recognize that many individuals may not have access to older computer programs and their required software, right? Uh, T-H-E-I-R, because this has to be a pronoun for computer programs. Many individuals may not have access to older computer programs and their, that is the programs required software. So the pronoun T-H-E-I-R. So they developed Olive, open library of images for virtualized execution and executable content archive Olive has two main purposes. First, it contains software that enables a modern computer to simulate all of the software of an older computer. Users stream the software over the internet to the newer electronic devices, um, which allows them to access obsolete programs. So it should be which allows them, right? Uh, because what are we saying here? That users, um, um, users stream software over the internet to the newer electronic devices. And that fact, which allows them to access obsolete computer programs. I can't say and which, because that and is misplaced. And I can't say it and this, because it and this would start a new sentence. And what I have here is a comma. To start a new sentence, I would need a semicolon or a full stop. So which is the best answer, which allows them to access obsolete computer programs in order to retrieve associated data files. Second, Olive functions as a free digital archive of outdated computer programs that individuals can use for education and research purposes. So education and research uses and purposes. Right, so this is a redundancy question. When you say, um, it's a free digital archive, then you're already saying at no cost, so C is out. When you say education and research purposes, you don't have to say uses and purposes, that's redundant. And when they need them is not needed because obviously they would only use it when it's a need. So these are all redundant options. The best answer is option A. Okay, Olive's collection includes sophisticated search tools that allow users to navigate the archive with ease. And we know that this is an expression of ideas question, which choice most effectively establishes the main idea of the paragraph. So let's just read a little bit more. Uh, one example is the Great American History Machine, an interactive map containing US census and election data from 1840 to 1990. This program was created by history professor David Miller in the late 1980s to help college students engage critically with US history. Owing to a lack of funding, Miller's program was never updated for modern computer systems, but it may still be a useful teaching resource. Another program that can be found in Olive is NCSA Mosaic, one of the earliest web browsers 
NCSA Mosaic provides a means of viewing some of the oldest websites in their original format, which may prove invaluable to historians of the internet. So this is kind of giving you examples of the work Olive has achieved, its collection. So if you look at the way the sentence is written, it includes sophisticated tools that allow users to navigate. And that's not a good introduction to the paragraph because the paragraph is about examples of software that Olive has been able to bring back to life. So I don't like option A. Um, Olive's collection has been praised by teachers, historians, and librarians, okay? Olive's collection includes programs that were preserved because of their unique content or their function. So this is a good option because when I say one example is the great American machine, I'm talking about programs, right, that were preserved because of their unique content. So I like C. Uh, Olive's collection is funded jointly by IBM and Carnegie Mellon. So D is definitely out because the focus of this paragraph is not on funding. Um, option B is not a good option because it does not gel with the next statement, right? When I say one example, that means one example of a program that was preserved. So, uh, so the best answer is option C. Okay. Um, this program was created by history professor David Miller in the late 1980s to help college students. So here you don't need any punctuation, right? After 1980s, because what you're trying to say is that um, it was like, there is a continuous sentence. You don't need a comma after 1980s because a single comma would indicate that I'm trying to separate a dependent clause from an independent clause or I'm trying to separate a modifier from an independent clause. But this is a continuous sentence. There is no break or pause between two different kinds of segments that I'm trying to indicate. So there is no need for a punctuation here. So, so it's just B. Okay. Uh, right, uh, question nine. Um, Olive's collection extends beyond the domain of educators and researchers, however, when programmers remake a classic video game or NASA scientists need their computers on Earth to be compatible with those used on the spacecraft on a decade long mission. So you are now looking at providing an effective transition from the previous paragraph. So the way the sentence is written, option A sounds good because the previous paragraph was almost entirely about, the, about how Olive can help education and research work. But this time we are looking at uh, classic video games and NASA work, right? So I like the way that it's the collection goes beyond the domain of education. So option B, Olive's collection has a variety of potential applications for industry, nevertheless. Why nevertheless? Nevertheless makes it sound that I'm contrasting it with something which goes before. So yeah, so that is that negative sense that it has doesn't justify it. Furthermore, many digital libraries stand to benefit by using Olive. So the point of this paragraph is not digital libraries. So C is not a good answer. In addition, Satyanara and Bala are working to enhance Olive's capabilities. So this is not about um, enhancing Olive's capabilities. This is about what other users Olive's collection can be put to. So the best answer is option A. Olive's collection goes beyond the domain of educators and researchers. When programmers remake a classic video game or NASA scientists need their computers on Earth to be compatible with those used on a spacecraft on a decade long mission, um, they may rely on Olive, right? Uh, programmers or scientists. So it has to be they, it can't be he or she because I'm talking about plural. When, when this happens, they may rely on Olive to fulfill their needs. As digital technologies continue to improve, preserving digital information is likely to become an urgent public policy matter. Okay, the writer wants to conclude by emphasizing the main idea of the passage, which choice best concludes the passage. So as digital technologies continue to improve, you would want to see a statement that says Olive's work will continue to be relevant or, can, or will continue to be important. But here I'm talking about 
um, preserving digital information is likely to become an urgent public policy matter. So that kind of goes away from the focus of the passage. So I don't like option A. Mm. Satya Narayan Bala will likely face a variety of hurdles, chief among them copyright protections. So that also kind of finishes the passage on a negative note and it goes beyond the scope of what was discussed. All its role will become increasingly important to function as an archive of digital products that were once commonplace. This is good. This is a good answer, so I like it. All its software archive will complement efforts to preserve other types of digital content, such as audio and video. Again, this is kind of taking the focus away from Olive and introducing other information, right? So D also is not a good concluding statement. The best answer is option C. Okay, so that was passage one. Let's go to passage two. Okay, so that's from question uh, 12. So I'll also bring it here. Yeah, this one. Okay, uh, the tale of Ot C, right? In 2008, Ovi Sokun uh, Lahash, an art teacher at a school for Mohawk students in Kanawake, Quebec, started looking for a way to teach her pupils about both digital media art and their Mohawk heritage. So I see a dash here and I see a comma here. So that immediately is like a mismatch because if I'm going to use a dash here, I should have a dash here as well, or I should have a comma at both places. So, so A is out, I'm canceling A, Lahash, an art teacher at a school for Mohawk students in Kanawake, Quebec, that, that seems fine. In option C, I have a semicolon here, so that doesn't make sense. And in option D, I don't have a punctuation after Lahash, right? So the best answer is option B. Um, Lahash, um, okay, so there is something here. At this point, the writer is considering adding the following sentence. So let me just read a little bit more. So if she wanted to, um, it's, it's a she, right? We'll find out. So this teacher wanted to um, teach her pupils. Yeah, so it's a she, teach her pupils about digital media art and their Mohawk heritage. Lahash partnered with a company founded by Mohawk multimedia artist, um, Sconati uh, Fragnito, to develop a workshop to use in the 2008-2009 school year. By the end of the year, Lahash's students had designed their very own Mohawk-themed video game. Okay, at this point, the writer wants to add the following sentence. The name Kanawake is derived from a Mohawk word that means place of the rapids. So that's not relevant, right? Um, that tells me the basis of the name of the place where the school was, right? So that has nothing to do with the passage. So I am going for no, uh, because it provides loosely related information that interrupts the paragraph discussion of the workshop. That's a good answer. No, because it does not provide adequate details about the origins of the Mohawk language. So that's not, relevant because like, why would you want to know the origins of the Mohawk language? The passage is about um, using digital technology to retain Mohawk heritage. So I'm going with C. I can look at A and B, uh, but I don't have to because this is quite obviously not needed here. So I'm just skipping that. Okay. Uh, the workshop guided the students through several phases of game development. The first step was the storytelling phase. During this first phase, students learned different storytelling techniques. Um, okay, so which choice most effectively combines? The first step was the storytelling phase. Uh, the first step, comma, the storytelling phase was the phase in which, the first step was the storytelling phase. The first step was the storytelling phase in which, Right. Yeah, so I like D. I, I think D is the best answer. Because option A, the first step was the one that was, this, this is just too many words, right? That is not needed. You don't have to say that. So A is out. The first step, comma, the storytelling phase was the phase in which. 
So again, I'm repeating phase. I can make it more concise. I can make it tighter. So I don't like B. The first step was the storytelling phase and students learned. So this and kind of does not convey the information as well as I would like to. I would like to say that it was this phase in which students did something, right? So I prefer in which to and, so I don't like C either. Okay, so students learned different storytelling techniques, listened to stories presented by elders and shared stories they knew, right? This is parallel structure question. They, you have a bunch of uh, uh, items in a list. So you want to make sure that all of those items uh, follow the same grammatical structure. So students learned something, they listened to something and they shared stories they knew, right? So subject and verb, past verb, past verb and past verb. So and shared stories they knew and shared stories they knew, right? You don't have to say any they or any subject because the subject is just presented at the beginning. The subject is not repeated with the second item, right? We are not saying any subject again. We are just saying the verb listened, right? So, and shared uh, stories they knew. From this phase emerged the narrative the students would soon bring to life. And uh, Iroqua Hunter journeys back to his village and defends it against characters from traditional Mohawk legends. Okay, so I think I would prefer a colon here after life because um, the first part up to life is saying that from this phase emerged the narrative the students would bring to life. So it's setting up an expectation for what that narrative is. And when you have a, a sentence setting up an expectation, a colon is the best punctuation because after the colon, you can describe that narrative. An Iroquois hunter journeys back to his village and defends it against characters from traditional Mohawk legends. So, so I like the colon, so I'm going to go with D. Um, option A, just a comma is wrong because that would create a run on, a comma splice. Uh, because you can't join two independent sentences with a comma. Option B is a run-on because you need a break there, you need a punctuation there. Um, option C is grammatically fine. You can put a semicolon there, but it does not convey the meaning with as much exactness, with as much accuracy as D, because I'm kind of, as I said, setting up expectation for what that narrative would be. So the best answer here would be option D. For this phase, the students had plenty of legends to draw from. Students outlined the game using sketches and clay maps. Then after a series of lessons on video game production, the students began to implement their plan. The end result was the game Otsi, Rise of the Kanyan Kehaka Legends. Okay, so which choice provides the best transition from the previous information to the next? Uh, so we started with the first step, which was storytelling. Um, then the, there was the, the narrative the students would bring to life. Um, and then I think we are moving on to the next game, the planning and development phase. Uh, students outlined the game using, yeah. So I like B for this because if I just say, uh, this, if I say for this phase, students had plenty to legends from, to draw from, then it doesn't provide a good transition to their outlining the game using sketches and clay maps. That's like the development phase. So I'm going to choose B. Um, Lahash served as a cultural advisor. That's not really relevant here because we know that she was running the show. Introducing the game to the public was one of the final phases. So we haven't reached the final phase yet. So D is not a good answer. So I like B. Okay, so this was the development phase. Students outlined the game using sketches and play maps. Then after a series of lessons on video game production in which they studied topics such as programming and 3D animation, the students began to implement their plan. Which choice provides information that is most relevant? So if I'm looking at video game production, I obviously, I like the way it's written, right? They 
studied topics such as programming and 3D animation because they were going to also develop the actual game. So I like A as it is. A subject with a short but complex history that doesn't really fit the context of video game production here. So that's out, which differs dramatically from the production of board games. Again, that's not relevant. We are interested in what the students learned, which continued to be taught at later workshops as well. Again, this is not relevant. So A is very clearly the best answer. Okay. When the game starts, a foreboding voice introduces the player's quest. Brave hunter, you have fought many creatures. So you can save your village and all the people you love from the horrible monsters that destroyed mine. Okay, so, so this is redundancy, right? Um, when the game starts, a foreboding voice introduces the player's quest. So at the beginning of the game is already understood because the sentence says when the game starts, before anything else happens is also built into the sentence. And by saying the following words, it is redundant because I know that a foreboding voice is introducing the player's quest. So that's understood. So all these options, B, C, and D are redundant. So I'll just go with option A. During the game, the player takes the vantage point of the hunter, seeing only arms holding a bow and arrow. The hunter travels through countryside landscapes and sometimes swims underwater to fend off an attack on his village by the flying head, an ominous looking monster with white eyes and ragged teeth. Along the way, the hunter encounters other legendary characters, uh, such as the hoof lady and the tree people, and hears their stories, right? The hunter encounters these characters and hears their stories. I need to say hairs because this is the verb for hunter, which is singular. So option D, hairs their stories. The hunter must then use the information he has learned to defeat the flying head. The game was a success. Otsi Rise of the Kani Kehaka Legends won the 2010 Imaginative Best New Media Award. While video games featuring indigenous people have largely been designed without the input of the people themselves, Lahash's workshop is part of a developing trend. So I need a comma after themselves, right? Because while this has happened, that is the, the first half, Lahash's workshop is part of a developing trend. So these are like two um, clauses that I'm trying to join. And this is not an independent clause. This is starts with while, so this is dependent. So I need a comma after it. So, uh, yeah, so C would be fine. I don't have to say anything after themselves because while already contains that sense of contrast that um, the sentence wishes to convey, right? So just a comma is fine. So while video games featuring indigenous people have largely been designed without the input of the people themselves, Lahash's workshop is part of a developing trend. Indigenous people are using the medium to tell their own stories. As Fragnito explains, so Fragnito was um, this person, right, who was a multimedia artist. Um, as Fragnito explains, we wanted to see more native people being not just the consumers of, but the producers of the cyberspace. Fragnito and Lahash hope to continue to empower indigenous youth to take a more active role in producing new technologies. Okay, so 22nd, which choice provides the most uh, effective conclusion to the paragraph and the passage? So um, I'm not sure the way it's written is correct because it's not about producing new technology. It's, it's rather about uh, being involved in the production of content, which makes up the sort of foundation for any new media. So we'll, we'll come back to A, but I don't like A. Thanks in part to the innovations of Fregnito and Lahash, the video game industry continues to thrive. But this is definitely not relevant because they did not innovate or did not come up with these new video game technologies. The success of the workshop shows that video game design can be an interesting and lucrative career. This is not about developing a career. This is about using indigenous voices uh, to produce the content that goes into video games. Another game to come out of the workshop is 
um, enter and the peacemakers vampum, which revolves around. So this introduces no inf new information. So this can't be the concluding statement. Okay, so then um, A is what we'll go with. I, I was hoping for an answer that would be a little less broad uh, compared to what is written here when I say producing new technologies. But I guess it's fine because, because they did produce an entire video game from scratch, right? So that makes sense. So A is the best answer. Okay, so that was the second passage. Let's go to passage three, which is question 23. And let me go to question 23 here. Yeah, okay. So this is 23. From engineering the future of wind energy, from 2010 to 2016, the amount of electrical power produced by wind in the United States more than doubled. As the market for wind power has inflated, so has the need for experts who can design and build safe and efficient wind farms. So I'm saying that the market for wind power has expanded, right? Uh, that's the best word in context because the market has grown, it has expanded. Inflated would not be correct in this sense because to inflate is to give the sense of something increasing beyond expectation, right? For example, runaway inflation of the dollar, right? So that is not that does not fit the context of an expanding market. Lengthen is used to increase the length of something. It's a very physical word, so it doesn't uh, fit the context for a growing market. And bolstered is to kind of provide support to something, right? Um, does not fit this context. So B is the best answer. As the market for wind power has expanded, so has the need for experts who can design and build safe and efficient wind farms. Nevertheless, engineers are needed to work on the next generation of wind turbines. The large windmill type devices that generate electrical power from wind. Okay, so this nevertheless doesn't make sense here because I mean, there is no contrast in the sentence. It's kind of flowing from the previous one. So, so I like specifically, right? Because in the previous sentence, I'm saying that we need engineers to design efficient wind farms and specifically a particular instant or a particular case of that is the development of next generation wind turbines, right? So D is a good answer. Finally, and instead. Instead, obviously, it doesn't make sense because I'm continuing from the previous one. And finally, makes it sound that I'm, I have a number of steps and now this is the final step and that's not what the sentence is doing. So, so D is good. Improvements in these devices have resulted in enormous increases in the amount of power a wind turbine can generate, but further advances are needed. One way to increase the output of wind farms is to create new turbines that have longer rotor blades than previous models had. Data from the European Wind Energy Association show a consistent trend in this direction since the 1980s. The trend is that turbine rotor diameters increase every few years. Um, okay, so which choice most effectively combines the underlying portions? Okay. So what was it? It started by saying um, data from the European wind energy combine show a consistent show a consistent trend in this direction since the 1980s with turbine rotor diameters increasing every few years. Um, consistent, right. So I like C. I'll just go with C first and then I look at the other options. So um, if I say this, it shows a trend, the trend has been consistently in this direction. So you can see that the way A is written is kind of long winded and too many words. So A is not right. It shows a trend since the 1980s. Um, okay, uh, consisting of turbine rotors increasing in diameter in this direction. So again, this kind of distorts the meaning. In this direction here, you're talking about an increase that's uh, that's not required, so it's repetitive. It shows a consistent trend in turbine rotor diameters, where turbine rotor diameters, again, this kind of, the idea is that the trend is, um, 
it is consistent and that trend is the diameters increasing. So C is the best answer. In the period between 2010 and 2015, uh, okay, uh, the rotor diameter of new turbines reached 2010 to 2015, uh, they reached, it was, it was 100, right? They reached 100 meters. So yeah, so I'm going with 100. They reached 100 meters several times that of turbines in the 1980s. Which makes sense, right? Because uh, you're going from, yeah, uh, several, oh, this is, okay, it's not graph, it's about uh, grammar. So the rotor diameter of new turbines reached this several times that of turbines in the 1980s. That's correct because you're comparing diameter with diameter. So you will have to say that off, you can't skip that. So, yeah, so several times that of option A is the correct answer. It's not the number of turbines, it's the rotor diameter of new turbines. Okay, as rotor blades have gotten longer, power generation has gone up dramatically. A modern turbine can generate up to 5,000 kilowatts of wind power compared with about 75 kilowatts for one from the 1980s, which, which is correct, right? Uh, which choice most effectively completes the comparison in the sentence using accurate information. So I'm saying that um, today they can generate 5,000 kilowatts, uh, which is several compared with about 75 kilowatts. So this is a huge deal. Um, so we are not looking at these later time periods, right? 300. Anyway, that's not correct because from 1995 to 2000, it was 750. So we are looking at like, you know, a significant time gap, right? So 1980s is good and 75 kilowatts is good. So A is the best answer. <clears throat> okay. Uh, in the future, oversized wind turbines are projected to generate even more power. Okay, one uh, engineer who designs, should I read it here? Yeah, this is where the rest of it. One engineer who designs the powerful wind turbines of tomorrow is Eric Loth. Although many such engineers work in industry, Loth, whose graduate studies in engineering focused on rotors is employed by the University of Virginia where he directs the Fluids Research and Innovation Laboratory. So although many such engineers work in industry, this comma is fine. Lot, here I need a dash because there is another dash here. So I need a dash here, Lot, whose graduate studies in engineering focused on rotors. So that whose graduate studies is additional information which I'm putting between uh, dashes. So a comma before Lot and a dash after Lot is what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, so comma before and dash after. So D is the best answer. Um, Lot leads a multi-institution group that is developing an innovative type of turbine blade. The group's concept features hinged, the group's concept features hinged foldable blades modeled on the flexible branches of palm trees, a design that will ensure that branches will not break even when exposed to extremely strong wind gusts. Blades will not break, not branches, right? Because we are talking about blades. So blades will not break, yeah. I can't say they because the sentence has both blades and branches. So they would be ambiguous. So blades will not break uh, even with extreme winds. Uh, after, they have, after they have created computerized models and simulations of the turbine and decided how and from which materials to construct the blade segments. The engineers will build a prototype and test it in a Colorado laboratory. We are working on the future extreme scale wind turbines, Lot says. The writer wants to add the following sentence. Lot thinks the prototype's blades alone might be as long as 200 meters, which means that the turbine could produce at least 10,000 kilowatts of wind power and perhaps even up to 50,000 kilowatts. Okay, so one engineer is this, although many such engineers, right, lot leads an innovative type of, yeah. 
Lord says, okay, um, so where should, he's kind of saying that it could generate up to 50,000 kilowatts. Uh -huh. Extremely, so that's about being flexible. Okay. Blades. Uh, so the blades part will come after this line. So it has to be after sentence four. Right. So the engineers will build a prototype and test it in a Colorado laboratory. So this is still to be done. And he thinks the blades might be as long as 200 meters. So this comes after the discussion of the prototype that will be built. So, right. So after sentence five makes sense. It also makes sense because if I put it here and I say that it could perhaps produce up to 50,000 kilowatts, then this sentence, we are working on the future extreme scale wind turbines. Uh, that makes sense after that, right? Because we are kind of saying that, mm, yeah, um, right. So the, the testing in the laboratory would indicate that this is the best answer. Okay. So after sentence five, yeah. Hmm. Okay, environmentally friendly wind power has become competitive with traditional energy sources such as coal and oil, but it is still comparatively more expensive. Um, has become competitive. It has become, I'm already talking about something that has happened, but it is still. So I'm going with A for this. Um, it has become more competitive, but it is st still comparatively more expensive to generate larger wind turbines. Uh, to generate larger wind turbines can help close that gap. So this is a new sentence a bit from larger. I'm starting a new sentence. Uh, yeah, so I'll just uh, put C here because um, if I'm saying that uh, wind power is still comparatively, comparatively more expensive to generate, full stop, larger wind turbines can help close that gap, right? Uh, so I can't put a comma because that would be a comma splice. I can't have D because that would be a run on. And B, I wouldn't make sense because if I'm saying and, then I need to have a comma before and, right? The fanboys rule. So a semicolon, if I'm saying, then I don't need and. I can just say larger. Okay, so that was passage three. Let's go to the last passage, passage four, and we go to question 34. 34 is where we have to start, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see 34 here. Let me check, is 34 here? It starts from 35 though. Mm. Yeah, so 34 I think is missing from this file. Never mind. so we'll just kind of do uh, what is here. A tale of two elephants. For decades, elephants were classified into two species, African and Asian, and some organizations that work to protect threatened animals still assign all elephants to one of these two groups. Um, also, several studies conducted since 2001, including one from 2016, is providing evidence that two unique African elephant populations are in fact two distinct species the savanna elephant and the forest elephant. Okay, so this, I, we don't have this question because it's not in the file, but this has to be a contrasting word, right? I need a, wait, I'll just type it out. One second. Yeah, so I need a contrasting word here because what I'm saying here is, where is the, yeah. So I need a contrasting word here because what I'm saying is that most species, most elephants have been classified into two species, African and Asian, but, but several studies, including one from 2016, have provided evidence that 
two unique African elephant populations are in fact two distinct species. So within the African uh, elephant population, there are two distinct species. That's like a contrast from the first sentence. So if question 34 had been there, we would have chosen a contrasting answer. Okay. Um, now for 35, I obviously need to have a plural verb because it's several studies, right? So let me look at the options. Several stud studies uh, provide evidence, right? Because that's the subject. Uh, they provide evidence. That's the plural verb I need. A, B, and D are singular verbs. Uh, evidence that uh, two unique, okay, conservation organizations should accept the scientific evidence and recognize the difference between the two African elephant species. Doing so will improve the elephant's chances of survival. Okay, so elephant's chances of survival. So obviously I need the apostrophe after s because I'm speaking of plural, many elephants. So apostrophe after s and chances does not need an apostrophe because that's not possessive. So the way it's written is correct. Elephant's uh, chances of a survival. The evidence for two distinct African elephant species is persuasive. In a 2010 study, a group of scientists led by uh, Naden Roland and David Reich obtained elephant DNA samples. Uh, they got these samples from an Asian elephant. So I, I can just say they obtained elephant DNA samples from an Asian elephant, which choice combines. Uh, I can actually say they obtained DNA samples from an Asian elephant, right? Because obviously those would be elephant samples. So I don't even have to say elephant here. So these uh, scientists obtained DNA samples um, yeah, from an Asian elephant. So yeah, none of that is needed. An African savanna elephant um, and an African forest elephant. Uh, when Roland and Wright compared the genome of the Samana elephant to the genome of the forest element, they found almost as many differences between these African elephants as they had between the Savannah and the Asian elephant. So here again, I need a comma because when something, something, that's a dependent clause. So I need a comma after that before I start the independent clause. So elephant, comma, they, B is the best answer. Uh, since African and Asian elephants had long been considered different species, the researchers concluded that the savanna and forest elephants should be as well. Right? So the researchers, um, in a 2010 study, right? So I would like to use the past tense, uh, but I don't want to say past perfect, not had concluded, because there is no reason to use the past perfect here. A simple past is fine. So since African and Asian elephants had long been considered, the researchers concluded that savanna and forest should be. So C. Those who are still unconvinced should look to a 2016 study of the long extinct straight dust elephant species. Paleontologists had assumed that the straight dust elephant was an ancestor of the Asian elephant because the elephant's skulls are shaped similarly. But DNA extracted from straight dust elephant fossils revealed a different evolutionary history. Their DNA sequences were more similar to those of the African forest element. Uh, right. So which choice sets up the information? Um, but DNA extracted revealed a different evolutionary history. So I already like that because evolutionarily, we are saying that the dust elephant is closer to the Amer African uh, forest elephant. So how long genetic material can be preserved? That's not the point. It's not a new technique. Uh, and it's not about where this species had roamed. It's about this new evolutionary history. No change. Their DNA sequences were more similar to those of the African forest elephant to do, than to those of the Asian elephant uh, or the savanna elephant. So I don't like this colon here. A colon can only come at the end of a complete sentence, right? So, um, so can I just say their DNA sequences were more similar to those of the African forest elephant than to those of the Asian elephant or the savanna elephant? D is the best answer. 
I don't need all these commas, right? What is the purpose of these commas? It's just a straight sentence. I don't have a list here or anything. So a comma after elephant or a semicolon after elephant before the comparative doesn't make any sense. So just D. Um, this finding supports the division of the African elephants into separate species. Furthermore, it suggests that the African forest elephant might even belong to a different genus than that of the African savanna elephant. Okay, so I know that this finding about the from the DNA evidence supports that they are different species. Furthermore, it suggests that they might even belong to a different genus. So this furthermore is a good connector because it's taking that idea of the difference between the two forward. So I like A. Um, nevertheless, and otherwise don't make sense because there is no contrast here. And conversely, it would make sense if I'm trying to present the information from another perspective, right? The converse of something. And that's not what it is doing. It is giving you additional information about the point of difference. So A is a good answer. Slow to recognize these overwhelming indications. Con conservation groups still receive billions of dollars. That doesn't make any sense. Um, the main idea. Okay, so let's read. If considered separate species, savanna and forest elephants would have population sizes low enough in quantity to allow the animal's conservation status to be changed from vulnerable to endangered. Organizations would also have the ability to address species-specific conservation issues. For example, the forest elephant is facing greater threats to its habitat than the savanna elephant is, threats that need to be tackled through specific management decisions. Conservation groups should acknowledge the findings of the scientific community and take appropriate action before many more of these animals disappear. Okay, so the focus is the importance of the dis distinguishing of these species to aid conservation efforts. So slow to recognize these indications, conservation groups are limiting their own ability to protect animals, have still affected the field of elephant research, should try to help animals. So the best answer is obviously B, because it's kind of describing how efforts to protect elephants, which are which are the main purpose of conservation groups are kind of hindered by their refusal to acknowledge this difference in the species. Okay. And um, if considered separate species, savanna and forest elephants would have population sizes low enough to allow the animal's conservation to be changed from. Population sizes low enough, low enough indicates quantity, right? So this is redundant, A is redundant. That are low enough in quantity, again redundant, with quantities low enough. So the presence of the word quantity is redundant because population size itself denotes a number. So D is the best answer. Okay, so that was the writing section. We had all the questions except for one, right? We didn't have question 34. Right, so that's something that we need to find elsewhere, but let's grade this now. Uh, let's grade the writing section. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so we'll start from the first one. Yeah, it starts from here. Uh, B, C, A, B, C, B, C, A, B, C. Okay, sixth, A, C, B, A, B. A, C, B, A, B, and 11th is C. Okay, let's go to 12th. B, C, D, C, B, C, D, C, 16, D, B, A, A, D, B, A, A, 20, D, C, A, D, C, A. Okay, passage third. Starts from 23, B, D, C, B, B, D, C, B, 27, A, A, D, B, A, A, D, B, 31 is D, 32 and 33 is A and C. Okay, 34 we don't have, so we'll go to 35. C A C B C A C B 
39 C A D A C A D A that was uh, 42 and then B D. Okay, great. So we got all correct except for that one question that was not on the uh, this the PDF. Right, so hope this was useful. Um, I know that many of you are writing the May SAT tomorrow, and I hope that you will have a chance to go through this video to practice before that. All the best for tomorrow's test. Do well and, uh, and come back for more content. Um, I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.